So this is a Patreon request from Alex Moriarty. And it's something on I don't necessarily always talk about. Gaming. But you know what, I am a fan of Raven Software, so I thought it was only fitting that I'd talk about their final game, Singularity. Now, growing up I played lots of their games. I was a bit of a, a shooter boomer, you could say. I play uh, classic Doom on repeat. Raven was down the road from ID Software after all, and they created a lot of classics. I especially spent many years playing the Jedi Knight series, and even their tie-in games were heartful, wholesome. This is the last game they made before being absorbed into the COD machine. Basically, this was going to be their new IP from Activision, but there was a problem. The game was far too ambitious in its original form, and it could barely play on the towers they had, let alone the 7th generation consoles. So those original two years of development were thrown out the window, and Raven had to beg not to be cancelled. So they were given seven months to make the whole thing. No extra advertising, they'd already paid enough into the, uh, the modest advertising budget seven months before the game released, so it was basically left a stray up river. You don't really expect it to come out from there, but here's the wild thing. Raven Software bloody did it. They made a game that, while has its problems, and there's a fair few of them, the actual core mechanics are outstanding. It reminds me of those Jedi games that I played in my youth, and how many options you have to approach stuff, with the gameplay being pretty fierce, and you know, you had those reactionary models that Raven basically revolutionized with games like Soldier of Fortune, you can blast off legs, heads, and body parts separately, but it's been expanded this time. Even if there's only a hint of what the original intention was, and what we got in the end is a little bit derivative, especially from a story and setting perspective, it's tame, you know, riffing on its contemporaries, a lot of that irrelevant background text is there, you've got those little audio tapes, it's a basic Soviet meets time travel bad future, tack on some spooky mutants, but of course there wasn't time to build anything unique, they were using Bioshock as a basis to glue between the gunplay. And you add a little pinch of Half-Life 2's immersive real-life conversation cutscenes and go on too long, and a dash of Wolfenstein from 09. Mechanically Wolfenstein uh, has a similar aspect, there's a pulp atmosphere with superpowers you can manipulate in a game world. Although 09 is polished and it had more time to expand on itself, it ran on the ID4 engine, which Singularity couldn't unfortunately. Singularity slows down its pace with the beginning being a little bit iffy, you know, there's a lot of filler, so you might as well just sprint right through them and enjoy the mechanics. Speaking of sprinting, it's limited. Same with the weapon slots. Manual saves are a bit shoddy in their placements, you know, they're set before long speeches and busy work, which isn't great on hard and the higher difficulties, which can be a little unfair at times for a first time player. There are box puzzles among box puzzles among box puzzles, it's almost a memeable mechanic. And yeah, these small niggles do bring the game down, say for example even little things like how to read the notes, you can't use the same use key to get rid of them, you have to press the escape key, I, I don't really like that, it just feels a bit awkward, it doesn't feel comforting to even attempt to read any of this stuff. And I'm sure the developers more than anyone knew about this, they were painfully aware. It's a miracle this game even exists. To quote them themselves, Did you think the abilities of a TMD were poorly explored? Did you get tired of using a device that could change the passage of time to merely renew a crushed box to non-crushed status? Yeah, so did we, but we did not have time to properly create fun gameplay with the weapon and build well-paced levels around it. But at least we have enemy types. So there's actually quite a good variety of enemies that you have to approach in different ways, including the mutants and the soldiers, which are very different in the attacks, but both lead to satisfying gameplay. Some of the heavier enemies as well, they have a very unique air to them with their outfits and the higher difficulties they really take a beating. There's a selective style of enemies that you have to fight in different manners that complement it. This game's really at its best when you're fighting the most enemies, which doesn't help in the bosses. Because while some of the reveals are pretty epic, they make it a little more interesting. It gives a little hype for those middling fights, which themselves are a bit repetitive and formatic, but at least there's only like three of them. However, stuff like the mini bosses, now that's interesting, because you can sort of mix and match those with enemy types and see how they interact, and I think that is where the game shines, in its variety, especially when it comes to weapons. While we're having the standard military basics, on top of that you get some specialized stuff like the Seeker Gun. And a fantastic minigun. 
as well as being able to upgrade all of them to make them a pretty powerhouse selection. Not to mention the AK, which is probably one of the finest AKs I've played in any of these sort of games. But there's a big problem here. The two weapon slot limit. That hurts. Especially since ammo is so sparse, you really have to buy it at the machines if you're going to get it. And do it while you can. And some of the gunplay there, you know, it kind of focuses on iron sights, which if you're a classic Duma Boomer, when it comes to shooters you might not like, it does make that sometimes just aiming normally is a bit spray and pay, but I think it works fair enough. You know, the, the weapons do quite a bit of damage either way, and the enemies are a bit like paper in comparison. Now there are some difficulty issues here. Normal is far too easy, and hard can be kind of unbalanced, especially for a first time playthrough. The difficulty peaks around the first third and then just slowly evens out as we go along. And it's not helped by the auto checkpoints which are, to be frank, they're not great. There was one part in my first playthrough where I didn't have the AK as a default and I got stuck in a lair full of these small enemies. Now trying to fight them with a shotgun was near impossible and these enemies can tank your health. In fact they're probably the worst enemy in the game, they're just such a pain to fight. And I swear I only beat this segment by dumb luck on my first playthrough, it must have took a hundred times to get through. And that difficulty curve can maybe be affected by stuff like the actual health bar, which is a rarity in 2010. You can upgrade your stuff with your stats. The healing system itself is a little bit iffy. It involves having a healing kit that you have to use. It can be quite slow to deal with. There's not that many invincibility frames from the middle of the battle. Uh, some minor changes may have made it a little better. Maybe a couple more options there. But there's a sort of, it does encourage you to be running and hiding while medicating. And not just hiding, because that's not always the best. It's, it basically forces you to keep on the toes and watch out for enemies. Because at any time you need to heal, you need to make sure you've got the limit to find cover and get away. Do not get surrounded or you're dead. But if you're feeling bold, you can use it during the fight if you use a little of those slowing down powers. And unlike the regenerating health, it does make you cautious. You only have a limited pool of health packs to use. And things like stim packs are quite rare, even though when you do have you are able to tactically use them with your telekinetic powers for a boost in aggressiveness. Those powers are the major appeal here, almost like an icing on the cake of what is already pretty solid gameplay. There's a ton that you can do if it be poofing enemies into dust, slowing them down with bubbles which are massively overpowered later on, morphing enemies into mutants to flip the dynamic of the fight, turning enemies into chopped tomatoes by force pushing them, and pulling enemies defences like shields, or even pulling things towards you in a tactical play, which is pretty satisfying. You can use explosive or ice barrels to blow up enemies, and they don't just ragdoll, they flinch. The animations have an attention to detail when it comes to that sort of thing. At times, even if the game gets easier, I feel like a kid in the candy shop with the options. It feels better even if the gameplay isn't as brutal as before. I'd also say there's some memorable set pieces here that help to mix it up. While the game is short, there's definitely some iconic stuff going on. Like the stairway you have to spiral up, there's nice little hidey holes to use your tactics. It really pushes you against the enemy characters, like playing between defense and offense and a vertical battle template. Or well, what about the first time you get an open environment when you have all your powers to use against enemies? At that point, it really does feel a bit more like you can experiment with your battles. Before things became quite tense, you had to play quite carefully. And now you're really given the open feel to mess around with to your heart's content. And that sequence also ends with a nice sniper crane timing match. You gotta move in a certain rhythm in that one. Things like the infighting towards the finale play to Raven's strengths like in Jedi Academy where there's a similar sequence. I always love that when you have multiple enemies clashing and you can sort of be the middleman between that. And by the end you really are the destroyer of worlds, your powers are so strong it creates a real great climax for the amount you can do, especially in the higher difficulties. In normal it's a little bit like autopilot at that point. And I think they really master the gameplay that. And of course, what seventh gen game would be complete without a shitty multi-ending situation? Pick a path, what cutscene do you want basically? None of that is particularly interesting. You know, it is frustrating in so many ways. Since all the seventh gen BS and the crunch is holding this game back. In fact, this is the first time I'd actually played it. And so far I've played it about two and a half times. And I've really enjoyed myself. And it also introduced me to some of the later Raven games I never really got a chance to play through. And they're so excellent. Like, they were such a fantastic studio. It's almost disappointing that they are, like, stuck in that COD limbo now. Even if this game is only four to six hours long, I mean, in my current state, that's actually a benefit. I like playing short games. 
I'm never able with my time schedule to ever be a long game these days. If they were to add a couple more hours of boxing your way through, I don't think it would have helped. It could have been a contender for one of the games of the generation and it still holds up well. Sure, there's a lot of wasted potential that was never realized and I hope Activision could see this and think like, ah, perhaps we can bring this back or do a new franchise. The original idea could be like realized now or even what about like a HD remake or really release? The actual game isn't bad looking, but there's some areas that could be shined up a bit. Maybe we can add a bit more pop colors and nice and more efficient engine, increase the weapon slots, and of course, a game plus mode would be fantastic. I would love to see a sequel for real. It could be legitimately fantastic. Think what the like, EA was doing with Titanfall 2. I mean, Activision, you need to fight back. Raven was winged by layoffs after this game as well, and Singularity ultimately failed. <sighs> Raven's been stuck working on God, for like, what, 10 years now? I'd love to see them do something different. I mean, it's the 30th anniversary for the studio. And Raven were one of the best. I mean, Singularity 2, maybe? I mean, I doubt that will happen. But if you're a boomer gamer and you like old school shooters, play this on hard and just be tactical with it. That's what I would say. You know, buy ammo, use the AK, avoid the pistol, and you'll be golden, baby. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed. I've got to thank my patrons for making this possible, especially Alex Morati, who did this, and also Daniel Strait and Joven. If you would like to request a video on a topic, now, I don't tend to talk about video games, but if there's a topic I feel passionate about, I don't really mind doing a video on it, especially if I've rejected another one that I didn't think was appropriate. Thank you to everyone who's watching this video and just seeing me try something a little bit different. For the next couple of months, I'm really planning to do the Satoshi Kon video I wanted to work on, but there may be a couple shorter, more casual videos coming out in that period too, just to sort of keep the channel alive. And until next time, have a good day.